Today's daf is Mesechta Kedushin, daf Chof Dalet. And we're beginning by Chof Kimmel Omid Beis, Uvavachi Hei HaKesef Mishal Acherem. Okay, that's a comment on the Mishnah. The Mishnah just said that uh, the Rabbonim, everybody knows that uh, we, we saw this yesterday, that everybody agrees that if somebody comes and pays for the Evit Kanani to go free, goes gives money to the master, for the Evit Kanani goes free, that could work. The question is, let's say, oh, there he comes. Akitovin. That's <clears throat> Ungehoiben. Uh, you know. Okay. So, it took one one minute, so they shall as well uh, try again. Uh, shall have one minute. Uh, okay, Bach. Just, just, just do. Okay, how by Chuf Gimel Omid Bais in the Sechta Kedushin, Levavachi Hey Kesa Mishal Acherim. Zuk the Heidi Kishmura. The Torah says that the Rabbanon say a concept that an Evit Kanani. Who has money? Uh, Evid Kanani has money. He is allowed to give the Odin the money, and he buys his way out. He buys his way out. Now, the question: If the where does the Evid get money from? Well, the Chachamim hold that somebody could give him money, and 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 if the Evid has money, the, it doesn't matter. It doesn't automatically mean that the the his master owns it. The Rabbi owns it. That's the Chachamim. That's why it could work, Michel Atzmoy. But Rameya says, no, an Evid cannot have money. Uh, you can't give an Evid without it belonging to the master. And therefore, the only way Kesef will work by an Evid Kanani is if somebody else pays the Odan with his own check without giving the money to the to the Evid. So the Gemara says, Neba Bahal Kabi Palgi. This is what the Machlekes is. The Rameya Sova, Rameya says, Ein Kinyan Evid, Belay Rabbi. It's impossible for an Evid to own something. It's impossible for an Evid to own something, Belay Rabbi, without its master. Ein Kinyan Isha Belay Balu, and Chaf Gimel Amabes. And there is no such a thing of a woman, a wife, owning something without her husband owning it. It automatically, when you give the Evid, it automatically belongs to the master. So as soon as you give the Evid money, how is he going to buy his way out? It's it, it's not his money anymore. So the Rabbanon Savri and Rabbanon hold, yesh kini l'Evid b'rei rabbi. It's possible that the Evid could acquire something without it belonging to the master. Yesh kini l'isha b'lei balop. Maybe a Chacham will hold that a wife can own something and it doesn't automatically mean that the husband. That's the thing a lot of wives <laughs> yeah. Gemara wants to say. So the Gemara, the Gemara says, the Gemara says, Amar Abba, Amar Rav Sheshes, Rav Rabba said in the name of Rav Sheshes, the Kuli Yama, both Rav Meir, both the Chachamim hold ain't kinyin the Eved v'lo Rabbi. You can't give an Eved gelt without it belonging to the master. Automatically, you give it to him; it belongs to the master. The ain kinyin the Isha v'lo Bala. You can't give a, a, a woman one money without it belonging to the husband. So why do Chachamim hold that it works? How, how does the Ebed have money without it belonging to the master? And here we're talking about the Aknele Achamona. Somebody gave the Ebed money, and he told him, He says, I'm giving it on condition that your master has no, has no ownership. It doesn't, it doesn't revert to your master. That was the condition of the person who gave the money. Rameya Sava, Rameya holds that doesn't those conditions don't work. Ki Amalekne, when you tell the other uh, uh, the Evid acquire this money, Kani Evid, the Evid acquires it. The Kani Rabbi automatically the master acquired it because the Evid is an extension of the rabbi's hand, of his master's hand. So it now belongs to the master. The Ki Amale Amanaz. So then when he adds the condition. So then he's like Klum Kamale. He's not saying anything because already <laughs> it was already in the pocket of the master by you giving it to the Evid. So you can't pull it out. Rabbanon hold that since you gave a condition on this money, so it will not belong to the master. It would only belong to the to the Evid. And that's how, according to Rabbanon, 
the Evid will have something that doesn't automatic that doesn't automatically belong to the master. Usually an Evid that finds something or he wins the lottery, it automatically belongs to the master. But here somebody else gifted him money with a condition attached that the master, it should not belong to the master. Coin to Rabbanan, it works. And therefore the Evid can use that money to buy his own pig uh, to get free. But Rablaza I mean, says he just tweaks it a little bit. He says, If you just say a condition that Amanas, the master, doesn't have it, 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 it won't work. Everybody will agree that as soon as the Evid gets the money, it automatically reverts to the rabbi, to the master. Here we're talking about, and where the Chachamim say that it could possibly work, a guy gave the Evid a mana, and he tells, says to him, I only want you to use this money to buy your freedom. Now here, that's a good tweak because by saying that, by saying that it cannot belong to the master because it has only one use, this money. The condition of the gift was it said be only used to buy his freedom. So Rameya so says, that still doesn't work. When you say, Ebed owns it, it automatically belongs to the master. Then when you say, you can't, it, it doesn't work because you already automatically put it into the hands of the master by giving it to the Ebed. So now you can't uh, say a statement that pulls it out of the domain of the master. And the Rabbanon Savre, Rabbanon say, he didn't give it to the master that it, it, he could own it. And he gave the money on condition that it's only used for, for the Evet to buy the freedom. And because of that, it can never revert to the master because the master is not using the money to Evet to buy the freedom. So, uh, so it remains in only in the domain of the Evet to do one thing with it to buy his freedom out, and therefore the the, the Chacham hold that here's a, a scenario where the Evid will have money that does not belong to the master, and he could buy his freedom. Says the Gemara, I'm going to ask you a stira, a contradiction of Rameer to Rameer. You see, Rameer said that you can give a, a, a you can't give the Evid money without it belonging to the master, and Rabbanan hold that there is a possibility of something like that. So we're going to ask you a contradiction. The time you we learned to the Brisa, we go to Chavdal Ram Alf. Ain, there's a concept called Pidyan Maishasheni. If I own fruits of Maishasheni and I want to transfer the Kedusha over to money, so the Torah says you could do that, but I have to add 20% to it. However, however, if my friend transfers the Kedusha of my Maishasheni fruit to his money, he doesn't have to give... Um, a twenty percent. He could actually trade it for its exact value. So if it's a hundred dollars of fruits, so my friend does not have to make it out to check out to one hundred and twenty. He can make it for a hundred, and that will transfer the kedusha on on onto the onto the money. But if I, as the owner, if I want to do that, the Torah says I have to add twenty percent. So now the machleik is like this: Ain isha A wife. Cannot redeem my Shashani. Presumably, this my Shashani belongs to the husband. And who's doing the transferring of the Kedusha onto money? The wife. She apparently has some money. The Chacham says she still has to add a Chaymish. A wife is considered like a stranger and she could redeem the my Shashani without and adding the 20%. So now, now how, do we, how do we understand this machlekes? Hey, Kedami, where did the woman get this money? The fruits belong to the husband. The money belonged to the husband. She just went into his wallet and took the money and transferred the Kedusha onto that money. So she's doing the, the, the message of the husband. So how could Rameya say that you don't have to pay the 20%? This is not her money. It's not her fruits. She's just doing what the husband wanted wanted to be done. She's a she's a shliach of the husband. So how could Ramea say that you don't have to add a chaimish? The Ella, it must be Bezuzadida. It's her money. but it's her his fruits. So the question is, Ish Amar of Isha. Then she is a stranger. She's a she, she is a stranger. It's her money, and 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 she's redeeming the fruits. So how could 
how could Rab, the Chachamim hold that she doesn't have that she has to give twenty percent? She is not the same person that owns the fruits. It's his fruits, here her money. So why, according to the Chachamim, do you have to add to twenty percent? So to understand the Machlokes, we explain it like this: El Elav, it must be. Hi, Gavna, the following is the story. A person gave a woman mana, and he said, on the condition you have only one use for this money, that you could redeem the miser. So does that money automatically belong to the husband? So according to, let's see, according to the Chachamim, it, does, it, it automatically belongs to the husband. And therefore the Chachamim holds that you have to add the Chaymish. Rameir says, that no, if you gave it on this kind of a condition, it doesn't belong to the husband, and therefore she redeems it without a chaymish. So what do we see? The ifcha shaminale. We're seeing the opposite of what we just learned. We learned, we learned, uh, we learned before that a mayor says that you, when you give it, when you give it to the woman, it automatically belongs to the husband. So therefore, uh, so therefore, uh, same thing over here. Why would a mayor hold that you don't? She, she's considered. Owner, uh, she's considered a stranger, and it's not the husband's money, and therefore you don't have to give a chaimish. It's an opposite opinion. Omar Eipach, you have to turn around this brisa. Rameir will hold that you do have to give a chaimish, and the chachamim hold you don't have to give a chaimish. Rava Omar Rava has another way out. Loilam loitep, you don't have to change around this brisa. The hacha over here, it's not the Maisa sheni that was the husband's. It's the Maisa the asa bebe askinim. It's the Maisa sheni. That she inherited. Let's say her father died. So she, and her father left over fruits of my Sashani. And she inherited those fruits. Normally, if a father leaves over fruits for the woman, right? What do you do with those fruits? Let's say it's hulin fruits. You take the fruits, you buy a piece of property with it, and the property remains in her name. But the husband has a right to eat the rent money, to eat, enjoy the, the fruits of that of that field. But over here, it's my Sashani money. So all you have is the fruits. And these fruits are supposed to be taken up to Yerushalayim and give it and eaten there. So that is what she inherited. Rameir goes according to his reasoning. The Omar, he said, Maisa Momen Hegdishu. Maisa, it really is Hegdish's money. It wasn't she inherited this money from her father. It was really she inherited this money from the Abishta. So therefore, Veloy Kona Baal. The Baal doesn't own it. And because of that, when she redeems it, when, when, when she redeems it, um, she doesn't have to add a chaymish because it's not it's not the husband's. And 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 uh, and therefore, even if she's using the money of the husband's, it's not the husband's fruits. And therefore, you don't have to add a chaymish. Ramdan and the or Ramdan go according to their reasoning. They say, Amri, mom and head you. When you have my sashani, it really belonged to the father. Yes, it's called my sashani. He had to bring it up to your shlayim, but really, it's considered his property. In fact, he could be Makadish a woman with that with that my sashani, and therefore, when she inherited this my sashani, automatically it belonged. The my sashani belonged to the husband. It's her fruits, right? But it, but whatever she inherits belongs to him. The Connie Leibal, and it really belongs to the husband. And therefore, if she's using the husband's money to redeem the husband's fruits, she would have to add. She's doing the the in the message of the, what the husband was supposed to do, and because of that, she was going to have to add a chaymish. So it's not a steer between a mayor and a bonum in the two in the two mishnayos brises. Let's the mishnayos to this brisa. Let's do the next gemara. Next gemara is back to Evan Ivri. Tana we learned in a brisa and Evan and Evan Knaini. A goyish slave, yoytze be'evich shein ve'ayin, goes out, if you, if you, if, uh, if the odoin uh, dislodges his teeth, knocks out his teeth, ve'ayin, or he blinds him. V'roshe e'varim shein in choyzrim. Or he, he, he takes off and knocks off any of the limbs that don't grow back. For example, let's say he chopped the finger off. So therefore, automatically, the evet k'naini will go free. So now the Gemara asks the following question. Bishlama, it's very understandable. Shane Ba'ayin Ksive. The Pasik says Shane Ba'ayin. I'm going to quote the Pasik on, on the screen over here. Here, um, here the Pasik says, hold on. The Pasik says, the Pasik says, the Chiyaki Ish is Ein Avdoyas Ein Amosa Bishikhasa. If you knock out the teeth, the eye or the or the teeth, this is supposed to be Shane. 
then the Chavshi Yishev Shechena Shtach So the Pasuk uh, the Pasuk says that it's clearly that the Pasuk says that the Evet Knani goes free. El Rashi Evarim and Olam. How do you know that if you knock out the Rashi Evarim, how do you know you got free? You go free. And says the Gemara, it's a Binyanavo, Mamet Sinu. Dumya the Shem Ve'ayin. It's compared to Shem Ve'ayin. Ma Shem Ve'ayin, Mumin Shebegoli Be'enon Chayzrim. That when these are open blemishes, when you knock somebody's teeth out and you knock somebody's eye out, it's everybody can see that the person's blind. And therefore, and they don't grow back. They don't re- heal themselves. Afkoil, any type of injury that you cause, the Evet Knaini, Mumin Shabagali, the Ainan Chaizer, if it's a public blemish and it will not repair itself, the Evet will go free. So if you chop his arm off, so therefore, Evet will go free. So the Gemara asks the question where the Torah gave you two examples of, of, of injuries that the Odin causes the Evet Knaini, and you go free. One is the tooth, and one is the eye. The Ema, let us say, they have a shame by iron, Kishnek, Sumon, Boim, Kachat. The shame by iron are two psukim that say the same idea. They get, there are two specific examples that the Torah gives. The Chal Shnek, Sumon, Boim, Kachat, Ema, Lamdim. So any, pos, any two examples that the Posse gives, which teach you the same idea, will not teach you that this din applies by other cases, because then the Torah should give you one example. The Torah gave you two examples. The Torah maybe was pendantic and saying that only Shein Va'ayim will the Evet Kanani go free, but not by any other Rashi Evarim, other limbs. So the Gemara says, no, the Torah had to write Shein Va'ayim because if I didn't write Shein Va'ayim, I wouldn't know that you go free by knocking the teeth or the eye. Tzricha. If the Torah would have written only teeth, I would have thought, we go to Ahmed Beis, that even if you knock out the teeth of a child, so the teeth, his baby teeth, well, they're going to grow back. So maybe the Evid will go free. So that's why the Torah had to write another case is you knock out an eye. And therefore, when iron doesn't repair itself, so the shame that you knock out, the teeth that you knock out, has to be a type of tooth that doesn't repair itself. The e cost of Rahman of the Torah would have written, I am just I, have a mina, I would have thought that only by iron that you go free. Ma iron shniver emoi, because the iron was, you were born with the eye. Af coil shniver emoi, but also, also, uh, only types of limbs that you were, uh, what, what, you were born with, that earns your freedom. Of a shame, but knocking out a tooth, you were not born with teeth. Lie, I would think that you don't go free. Sricha, that's why the Torah had to write these two examples. So each the, the Torah gave you two examples of shame ba'ayim, not to be pedantic, but actually to universally apply this idea that if you injure the Evit Kanani in such a way that you cause him a blemish and it's not going to repair itself, the Evit will go free. So the Gemara asks the question, Neymar, let us say, ki yake. The Torah says, when you will uh, hit your slave, klal, that's a general rule, right? Shein va'ayim, the Torah gives you prat as an example, it details you. So the Torah gives you the example of what you did. So you have a klal u prat. We have a general and a detail. Ein klal el mashu prat. You only generalize only exactly what the details, the examples that the Torah give. Shame the iron in only shame the iron, media green alloy, but no other limb will be included, no other injury will earn the and have its freedom. So that's the Gemara's question. Why don't you say it's a klal or prat? Answers the Gemara, no, the chafshi yishachenu. The Torah says freedom that you should send them. So, cause of a klal, the Torah made it general again. It's a plural thing that he goes free from all these things. So now you have it this way. The familiar, klal, a general rule, uprat, an example, uklal, in a general rule, when the Torah writes a, 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 a din, a, a concept, and gives it to you in such a way, a general rule, a detail, and it repeats itself, you don't have to be saying that it has to be like the exact examples. It can be only something similar to the to the example. Ma prat mafurish mum shabagali veinim chayzrim. The 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 detail that the Torah gives, it's an open blemish will not repair itself. Av kol shmum shabagali veinim chayzrim. It's only by uh, open blemishes that will not repair itself. 
Ima haprat. So the Gemara says Ima haprat mufurish mu misha begali bottom of lachtoi vein echoiza vein echoiza. One of these things, if you look at the example closely, knocking out somebody's eye, it's an open blemish, and it's not going to repair itself. But there's one other problem: ubatom emelachtoi. He can't do his work. He can't see. And same thing with the teeth. You, you you can't chew once you knock out somebody's teeth. Something his the functionality of the body is different. Only limbs that change the functionality of the body, such an injury, that injury will earn the Ebbet's freedom. If that's the case, why did we learn in a If If the master pulled on the beard of the Ebbet and dislodged, let's say, a jawbone, but it doesn't really cause him, he just looks funny, but it doesn't really cause him that he can't chew or he can't see. Or it doesn't cause him to lose functionality of the body. Still, the Bryce says, Evan will go out free. So why does it, how does that work? It has to be similar to the Prat. And the examples that the Torah gives are such examples that these injury cause a function, functionality change in the body. And says the Gemara, L'chavshu Yishachenu. The Torah is Ribu Yehu. That is a reboy. In other words, with not darshani klal pratu klal, we're doing it reboy, an expansion, a a mute is just one little restriction, and then an expansion. So we expand it to include any type of serious injury that doesn't repair itself, even if the functionality of the body is is not lost. So pulling on the beard and and dislodging, let's say a, a bone, a, a bone will not. Uh, will be included in one of the ways that the Evid will go free. Says the Gemara, if you're, if you're expanding it to include every type of injury, then what happens if he damaged the hand and it shriveled, but it eventually will repair itself, that should be a way that the Evid will go free because it's a real heavy injury. Why do we learn in the Brisa? He called, he whacked the Evid's hand. Vitsamsa and then it shrivel. Vitsaifa lachsar, and eventually it's going to heal itself and he'll gain back the functionality of his hand. Ain't Evid Yoitzubal the Evid will not go free. But if you say it's a reboy and it's expansion, then let's include that as well. Answers the Gemara, then in came Shave Aimai Hanale. What are you going to do with the Why did the Torah give any examples? The Torah should say, anytime you hit an Evid, it goes free. The fact that the Torah says Shane Ba'ayan, it's because Shane Ba'ayan, a type of injuries, that will never repair itself. So only types of injuries that don't re- that will not repair itself, and it's in a public, it's in a public area. It's boom shabagoli. You can see it, uh, uh, even though even though it's a type of injury that will not change the functionality of the of the body. The evid still will go free. Now we go. Uh, what happens? Another a concept. The evid goes free, but the question is, when you're not kashen ba'ayim, do you have to give him? Uh, get shikra. Turn around, but we learn. Makulam Evid Yotze Ben Mecheres. The Evid will go free. But Tzarich get shikra. You have to give him a get shikra. Tiv Reb Shimon. Rameir Roy Me'ain the Tzarich. Rameir says you don't have to give him a get shikra. Reb Lezoy Me Tzarich. He still, despite knocking his eye out, you still have to give him a freedom document. Reb Tafin Roy Me'ain the Tzarich. Reb Tafin says you don't need it. Reb Kiva Roy Me Tzarich. Reb Chimit says you do. Hamachriyin Lefnei Chachamim Ma'amim. Those that normally try to uh, make a compromise. In front of the chachamim, picking cherry picking certain different chachamim, they, those types of those were the, the, doesn't say who they are these people, but these people have a new opinion. Nirin divir Rav Tarfin b'shem bayin. We paskin like Rav Tarfin that you don't need to get shikra if you knocked his tooth and eye out. Shatar is because it's clearly written in the Torah when you knock a shem bayin, the evid goes free. The divir Rav Kiva b'shar evam. So by other Rabbi Akiva, according to Rabbi Akiva, by if you knock out by Shar Avarim, so we'll pass it like Rabbi Akiva that uh, if uh, suppose you 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 chopped his arm off, then um, that you still you would have to write a, a get shechra hoyl uknas chachamimu. Since it's a fine, a penalty of the chachamim that an evid goes free with other Avarim. If you knock out other Avarim. Frank the Gemara Knasu is that a is that a a penalty of the Chachamim Kroy Kadarshan. We have Psukim a Riboy Mir Riboy, which the pasuk seems to expand to include any type of of, of mortal injury. 
so so what 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 do we mean like that? Elahoyel umidrish kachamavo. Since it's not clearly written in the pasuk, so therefore midrabanan they required that the person should have a get shikra because not everybody is aware that if you knock out other Rashi Avaram, the Evid will go free. It's not everybody aware of that because it's not written in the Torah specifically. The Torah only says Shema Ayim, not by other Avram. So people see him walking on the street. They'll say, oh, Evans can leave their 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 master without any uh, freedom document. That's why the Chacham says that if you go out, Bashar Avarim, even though Midaraisa you go out, Bashar Avarim, you still need a Get Shechra. Nevertheless, Rav Shimon held, you always need a Get Shechra, even with Shema Ayim. Gemara says, my time is Rav Shimon. What's the reason of Shimon? Yalv shiluch shluach mi isha, it's a clear shava from isha. The chafshi yeshal chena. Ma isha, just like to get to divorce a wife, the bishtar, there's no way. You have to give her always a document, a get. Af evet nami bishtar. Also evet, it has to be with a shtar. Rav Meir, Rav Meir says, you don't need a shtar by an evet, by shem v'yayim, ik siv chafshi labsoif kidda ka'amrit. If the Torah would have written, yeshal chenu chafshi, send them free. So then I would agree with you. But Hashna, the cost of the Chavshi, Yishalachenu, since the Torah wrote, he goes free as soon as you injure him. So then, Havalei Chavshi Mikari, he's free right away. And the Torah seems to imply that you don't even have to write a get Shechra. One, uh, one and a half minutes, we'll do another, uh, uh, another Torah Rabbanan here. Two Torah Rabbanans. Torah Rabbanan rabbis taught. If you blind him, or if you deaf your Evid, you made him come deaf, the Evid goes free. But Neged Eina Veini Roy, Keneged Oznei Veini Shmoy, let's say you didn't hit his eye or his ear. What you did was you knocked the wall where the Evid was standing and the fright of seeing such a, a bang to the wall where the Evid was standing caused him to go blind. Or the sound of that bang caused him to become deaf. Ein Evid Yotzebam Lecheres. The Evid will not go free. Amr Rav Shemin Bal Ravashi. So Rav Shemin said to Ravashi, "Lememra, let us say the kol elav klumu that when you damage somebody by making a powerful sound and you cause somebody to go deaf, you didn't do any damage. It's not your fault. Is that true?" Well, Tony Rami Bar Cheskel, Rami Bar Cheskel taught Tarnagol a chicken shahoshid roishid laavia klis chusid. He stuck his head into the airspace of a glass of a glass vessel that he normally eats from. The talk boy, and then he made a loud sound. Ushvarim broke the glass, and if this glass blo- belonged to somebody else, Mishalim Nezek Shalim, he pays Nezek Shalim. This is a, the opinion of Sumchis that that despite it's not the body of the chicken that caused the damage, it was the 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 energy of the chicken that caused the damage. You pay the full Nezek. Vamar of Yosef Amri Beirav. Rav Yosef said in Beirav, they said. The, the horse that made noise and the and the donkey that made a neigh made a loud sound and broke Caleb that are in the house. So they pay half an ezim. Like the Chachamim who hold that if it's not a damage with the physical body of the animal, they pay chatzin ezim. But what you do see from both of them is that you have to pay. So by causing a sound vibration, you're actually damaging so therefore, the question is, if I cause a sound vibration and the Evid goes, goes deaf or blind, why doesn't the Evid go free? It should be considered as if I or whoever it was, the master, caused this damage. Answers the Gemara, fascinating terrors. On Malay, Shani Adam, even the Bardasu. Adam is considered a normal person. His own anxiety caused the sound to, to cause him to go blind or cause him to go deaf. We learned in Ebraisa, Hamabas as Khaber, someone who frightens his friend by making a loud sound, Potamedina, all the Mikhaibedina Shmaim. In the Bezdin, they can't uh, uh, cause him to because, because because he didn't damage it. He didn't physically damage, he just scared him. Kaitsa talk about Osna Vikershoy. If he blew in his ear and made him go deaf, Pata Ya Pata from Bain. Achazuhu, but talk about Osna Vikershoy. If he grabbed him and then you blew into his ear, so you physically uh Caused him to shake, and then you and you blew uh, blew a sound in his ear and caused him to go deaf. Then you chive. So we see just the sound enough. If you uh, uh, is not enough to uh, consider a man liable for damages. So because of that, the Gemara learned that if uh, the the master made a sound and the Evid went blind, he will not go free. One more, one more minute, and then we'll stop. Tanur we learned in the Brisa. He koel al shina 
and yochel ishtamish be machash ain't ever yotze be cheres. Let's say you knock the the eye out, but you cause him to lose his vision, but it now he has blurry vision, or you cause his teeth to become loose. So then the Ebed does not go free if he could still, you know, have some use from the tooth or still have some use from his sight or his eyesight. Then love, if it's totally useless anymore, even though it's just hanging there or the eye is still in place, but he has a terrible vision, he can't you he can't walk around, Evan Yitzhaban Mecheris, then the Evan will go free. One more, Tanya Idah, we learned to the bright, another Brisa, if his eye was already blurry and he blinded him, or the tooth was shaking and he just knocked it out, if the Ebed could have used when he still had the eye, he still was getting around making use of it, or the teeth, he was still using it, although it was very loose, then by the other, by the other doing something and making it worse, Evan will go out free. But if in love, but if not, if they had no use of it from before and the other just knocked it out, because the other didn't do any further damage. It was already useless when he had it. So the Gemara concludes, it's Rika, and he does both prices to say the same idea. First price says, if I would only have the first price that says that if you blurred the vision of an Eved or you just made his tooth loose, you go the Eved can go out free because in the beginning the Eved go had 20-20 vision and now you made him into a blurry vision person so therefore the Eved goes free but the second case where the Eved already had blurry vision he already had very weak eyesight Aim a light. So I, I just because you blinded him, you wouldn't go free because he already had a very poor vision. So I would think you don't go free. But if it would just say the second case, because you're actually blinding him completely. You turned him from blurry vision and you blinded him completely. Uh, or you had a loose tooth and you knocked it out completely. That's why he goes free. You never blinded him completely. You just took him from 2020 vision. You made it blurry. I would think you don't go free. That's why we have to have both prices give you different scenarios. Okay, we finished. Baruch Hashem. Daf, Chof, Daf.